Hey y'all, it's me, Niecy Lynn. I hope you're having a happy Friday. This is floss tube number 50 and we are on December the 4th. I will also uh, double down on it as Vlogmas number four because when I get done filming, I'm going to go pick up Aria Kyle, so I probably won't get a chance to film again today because she may not, may or may not nap. So this will be uh, Vlogmas number four and floss tube number 50, which is crazy to think that I've done 50 of these, but um, I love hanging out with y'all and visiting with y'all and this is as close to Stitchy Friends as most of us are getting right now. So it's nice, it's super nice. And um, I enjoy all your comments. And this is a channel about mainly cross stitch. There's a little bit of other stitching and things that come up and then just my day to day. So um, if either of those things don't interest you, you can probably just, because that's what we talk about here um, and me dying of allergies. Cedar is come in and ragweed is in at the same time. So I'm drowning over here, but that's okay. We're gonna be fine. Feast of Friendship, we're gonna, I'm gonna go straight into questions. Um, a lot of y'all are looking for Feast of Friendship. And uh, there were several of y'all that said specifically you're looking for it. But, Jerlyn at Finish a Quilt on Etsy says she has it. Dottie, um, who is Stitching Scotty, says Stitch and Frame in Rock Hill, South Carolina has it. Lisa says House of Stitches in Indiana has it. And <laughs> okay, somebody else talked about where else, so we'll come across those. I tried to group them together, but sometimes I can't get back. I've built up my messy writing, so which is horrifying. This is this are my show notes, y'all. So you all can see how horrible my handwriting is. It's like horrifying. We had talked last week about Audrey Stitchy Witch 42, and I assume that she parked her threads since she does some beautiful full coverage pieces, and she says she does not. Now, the only thing scarier to me than doing a full coverage piece and parking the threads would be doing a full coverage piece and not parking the threads. So, I can't imagine. So, when the COVID is done, I am going to um, just descend on Audrey, and I'm going to have to watch how this happens because... I have trouble stitching when it jumps around a lot anyway and it's probably just because my attention span is squirrel like that but I cannot imagine that is wild to me so y'all go if y'all do full coverage either way parking or not parking I am incredibly impressed Lori says um, ask about how I started my stitches. Like, so if I'm using just regular thread, not fancy floss or variegated, so this is just, um, just a regular piece of thread and I'm gonna try to show on this and we're gonna see if I can get it close enough. This is the loop method. So the loop method, you just push both ends through the eye of your needle so that you have the two ends here are our two ends, and here we have a loop on this end, right? Okay? And we're going to pretend like, and I hope this will pick it up, that this is the back. So where my fingers are is the back, just like I'm holding my hoop, okay? You're going to push through the back. So you're going to make, this is the first leg of your X, right? And you're going to come through and catch that loop. Can y'all see that on there? So you just caught the loop on the back. The first leg of your cross is done with it. Then you're gonna push back up through for your second leg and back down. And you're done. So here's your front side here. And all you did was make your little loop and then so we'll undo it. Maybe that'll help also from this side. So this is your front side now here. When y'all suggested using this plastic canvas. So there's our first leg with our loop done here. I'm gonna pull through my loop. So if you have to take the stitch out for some reason. So here's your looped thread. 
So you just have your loop and you just start stitching and catch that loop on the back side. When you come through for your first leg, thread back through it and you're caught. It's very smooth. It doesn't leave a bump or anything. I've always been super pleased with this start. If I'm using a variegated thread, you don't have a loop, right? You don't have a loop. So I'm not gonna undo this, but just pretend like this end is cut because I don't, I don't have any scissors right here. So if I'm using variegated, I'll use a pin stitch. So this is my backside and you can split threads on Ada and do it. I do that, but I know a lot of people don't like to. So we're gonna pretend like this is linen, okay? Or, or you're splitting your threads on Ada. So here is your, you got one, two, three, one, one, two, three, like this, right? So you're gonna, now Phyllis does hers this way. I don't feel like mine get looking as smooth. You don't have an extra leg that way though, but. So either way works. You just want to catch that. So this is gonna be your cut end. We're gonna pretend like this is your cut end right here. So here you have gone up and down in your center. And then this is your next top block center. Okay. So you're caught. That's how you're gonna look on the front and that's the center of your cross right there. And you've caught that thread and then you just come back and do your cross on top of it. And that's really messy with this kind of thread in this X, but you can see that once you're stitching along and doing your thing, that's really not going to show up very much at all. And once you're looking at the whole piece, it's just not noticeable. So that's how I do my pin stitch and my loop stitch. Um, I hope that helps. Like I said, you can start your pin in the center. You can start your pin side to side. I do um, usually, I tried to go on side to side of my legs and I just feel like I don't get it smooth enough, which is not anything wrong with how you do it. It's something wrong, I'm sure, with my stitching and how I don't, and I'm gonna have to take my sweater off. I was freezing to death. No, of course I'm not. Go me. Hello, hormones. For heaven's sake. Now I'm gonna be freezing. Um, Renee said she watches why she's donating. Oh, sorry y'all, bumped y'all, yikes. She watches why she's donating plasma. I think that is so fabulous. Um, I used to donate all the time. Then my rheumatologist said that I should not, that you're not supposed to donate. But now something I read the other day said you can donate blood. You just can't donate plasma. So I've got to look into that further because he's, um, my rheumatologist retired and I haven't ever got another one because I don't like taking all the crazy medicine anyway. I'll be sorry for my fingers is all crooked and all, but yeah, it is what it is. The medicines scare me. They like the medicines, Lord have mercy, they have worse side effects than what I'm feeling like right now. So I'm sure it's a flaw and an error in judgment on my part, but it is what it is. So thank you, Renee, for uh, donating and anybody that can. I know every, all the banks things are low right now. So if you can go, go. Um, Ava, Ava, I do not know why I never thought. She said list the floss tubers because I do say their names. Like I was uh, talking about uh, Stitch and Scotty and Cassie Joe and several people that I've watched, uh, new people and it's hard to get their name and I know my accent probably makes it harder. I don't know why I never thought to uh, write their name in the, or link them even, I may could link them if I can make things work, but I could write their names in the description box. Thank you, Ava. I call y'all my hive brain for a reason. I need it. So I will try to remember to list uh, the floss tubers in the boxes uh, when I, on the description box, which I forget to do sometimes too, but I'll try to do better. Uh, Kim, why did Taco 6 said, uh, last time we did this on Friday, um, I was talking away and got distracted and did not finish about the bird flying in. I came back from my walk and went to, we have a, you know, a keypad on the back door. And so I key the code in and it goes 
like it always does, you know, when it's unlocking. But then it goes. I could not make it stop. I'm pushing the lock button. I'm pushing the stop button. I finally am just pushing all the buttons. Nothing will stop. So I'm like, great googly moogly. I'm locked out of my own house. Well, then I remember that there's a keypad on the garage door. Thank God my husband loves gadgets. So I go over there and, or my husband loves me, I guess, and don't want me to get locked out. Maybe both, both. Key in and get in the house. And I come in here and you can even see it on the back side going ring, 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 ring. And I can't get it to stop. And things like that, what's making sounds like that, make me crazier than normal, crazier than usual. I don't guess my crazy is ever normal, but crazier than my normal crazy. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Well, of course, I have put my contacts in because I was going for a walk, which means I can't see up close. I can see far away. So I know I'm trying to get the batteries out and I can't get the cover off the thing. And I'm like, Lord, have mercy, somebody's gonna make this stop. And so I'm going, I'm looking for a screwdriver and because I see there's two little screw things on the side. I'm like, okay, I must have to take the plate off to get the batteries out to make it stop going ring, 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 ring. And I'm, you know, eyes twitching and the door is still shut and making the sound. And I find the screwdriver and I get, I, ha I get the door open at this point. I get it to go fast enough that I turn it real quick when it's open. I can get in. I held it, which probably wasn't good for the lock, but it started going and I held it and then opened the door, okay? So then here I am with this screwdriver, with these reading glasses. I'm up on the same trying to see how to get this little screw thing in here. And one of my sparrows flies in the house flies right in that door right there. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Good grief. And hit the door. Hit the door, bam. And I'm like, oh my gosh, look down there and then flies right in the house. And I know this is probably one of my relatives. They coming back laughing at me. They wanted a closer look. And of course, at that exact moment, I hear the garage door going up which means Mike and the girls are here. So they come running in, shook, shook. And I'm like, oh my gosh, oh, hold on, there's a bird in here. Micah comes over and takes a screwdriver from me and starts getting the cover off to get the batteries out of the thing and make it shut up. And I go over and get the little bird. Um, I just take off my jacket and drape it over it because I don't want to hurt his little wing. So I just took the tail of my jacket and draped him over him and took him outside, but boy, howdy, I'm telling you what, when things go south around here, they all go at one time. And I, you know, when it rains, it pours, it ain't no joke, feast or famine, and that's the way around here. I was like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. So Mikey got the batteries out and everything. She said, mom, I said, no, just leave it apart. Your daddy can mess with that when he gets home. No, I ain't running the risk of that thing, making that sound again. Because I'm that person, if, like he puts those, and I call it a pig, on the TV, he doesn't appreciate that, but I don't know why it makes me think of a pig, but it's a battery backup he puts on the TV and on the computers and on everything, everything has, the computers and everything has these little pigs on there so that if the electricity goes off, you know, it, then it shuts everything down in a timely manner. Uh, my husband likes to serve the appliances and things. I like for the appliances and things to serve me, okay? I ain't about working for them, but he understands things like this that I don't like to think about or understand. Well, the last time he put one on there, something in it went, and I mess up electronics. I will own that. I mess up the lock, I mess up any kind of electronics. I told y'all before there was like a year in my life that every time I went into, not out of like I stole something, because it happened then too, but it happened on the way in. I'm going into the store even. I set off the alarms. I don't know. 
maybe some alien implant, I don't know. But that pig on that TV started going off. And maybe that's why I think of it as a pig because it squeals like that. Well, it's supposed to do that and then shut down the TV. But it did that and it kept doing that and it didn't stop doing that. And it kept on going for like 30 minutes. And I'm like, at this point, and I can't take it. So I go over there and I'm feeling under the TV uh, console thing where he has all the bits and pieces that go with the TV. And I start jerking things out of the plug. I'm unplugging it, I unplug it from the wall and it's still going ee, 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 ee. And I'm like, oh no. I went and throwed it out in the backyard and left it laying out there. I, I, those things like that, I cannot take. I cannot take things like that. People that work places that have sounds, loud sounds and sounds going off all the time, I don't know how y'all do it. I can't take loud sounds. I don't like going loud, crowdy places. It freaks me out completely. So he came home and he was like, uh, I was like, uh-uh. You can buy another one. You can make that one stop, whatever. Well, he made it stop and plugged it back in and then it happened again in a couple of months. And I throwed it out in the backyard and I said, listen, don't hook that back up in here. Throw it in the garbage. Take it to somebody else. I don't care, but don't hook that thing up in here again. I can't take it. I cannot take it. Oh my Lord. Things like that. I'm a no. I'm a hard pass on things like that. So that's what happened with the bird flying into the door and me and my cuckoo brain about things. And Deanna asked about using the fuzzy stuff or the treasure braid. And I'll show them in the, when I'm stitching there in my whips and in a finish. They're both by, I think they're by um, Rainbow Gallery. Both the ones I have are Rainbow Gallery. But um, I'll tell you when I'm showing them, I had some trouble with those things. And of course it's just, I'm sure it's me. Pam and Kathy and a couple of y'all um, did let me know I am behind um, on my floss tube watching and I got behind on Misty's. Her relative that um, had the cancer and that the Gather and Berries was going to help pay for his medical bills did pass away. She is still, um, all those funds are going to his widow and his children. He has a young widow and children. So it is a beautiful pattern. It is one of the shares today. And, um, but go to her Luminous Fiber Arts, Misty for Sale. It's a beautiful pattern. And um, y'all, I've seen it stitched in, um, green, I think hand stitch it in green. And then um, one of y'all said, I had not heard of this silk before. Nancy, who is recovering from the COVID, please rest, take care, drink your hot liquids. She said that Mrs. Cetus, M-I-S-S-U-S -S -S space S-E-D-A-S, -S, and that's silks. Somebody had stitched it in their toxic and it's called Toxic, and it's green and orange, and it was real pretty, but I couldn't find the picture, so I'm still looking for the picture of that, but the, after I went and looked at the silk thread, I bet it is really, really pretty stitched in that, so if any of y'all know the name of the person, the stitcher who did it, um, holler, because I was looking for it, but that is, um, that is gonna be beautiful stitching that. I'm gonna use it um, maybe in blue, I'm not sure. I'm still on the fence about what I'm stitching it in. Um, okay. Margaret had their 27 year anniversary on Thanksgiving. So happy anniversary, a little late. And um, I know Jackie had, they had their 25 years on the 25th. So her daughter said it was their silver and gold because it was 25 years and it was 25 on 25. So that makes for 50. So it's their silver and gold anniversary. And I like that. But Margaret, one year when I was a kid and I was little, like I must have been either early elementary or pre-elementary. My birthday, April 17th, it fell on Easter. And I thought that I was the queen of the universe, you know, because I had this um, special birthday on this special holiday, you know. And 
Then lo and behold, it didn't happen the next year and I was highly aggravated. And my poor family trying to explain to me that, you know, Easter changes around and I'm still not down with all that. Can't we just pick a day? Let's be honest, it's probably not exactly the day anyway. Can't we just pick a day? But that's just me. Of course, it could, you know, get on my birthday. I, know, I get it has to be a Sunday, so it has to kind of change, I guess. But when you're a little kid, that is hard to grasp. When your birthday is on a special, super special, fabulous day, and then all of a sudden it's not on a super special, fabulous day again. Yes, that was very upsetting. I was not happy about that. And I can remember to this day, I'm still a little bitter, I guess, about my birthday going wrong. Or going right once and then not being right again, however you want to think about it. Um, and J.I. Primitives, um, she is a um, retired pre-K teacher. And I just want to say thank you to teachers. I have numerous friends that are teachers. And Jackie um, Gosson is a teacher and she has been making fun masks to wear, um, holiday themed masks to wear to try to, uh, you know, cheer things up and brighten things up. Um, it just has to be scary when you're a kid it's scary enough when you have to talk to your teacher and you're, you know, a lot of kids, I mean, I always was always bold as brass, but a lot of people aren't. And so when you have to approach the teacher about something, it's kind of scary anyway. So then if she's like this, I mean, that's even scarier. So I appreciate all y'all do to try to love on our kids and um, raise them up and get them situated. And just, I mean, it's hard enough on this, on us as adults to get through all this mess. So being a kid is hard. So, um, thank you all the teachers out there and of course um, all our healthcare workers and our delivery people. I told y'all on my floss too, on my blogmas yesterday, I have a little basket on the front porch and I put a little wood tag on there that says, um, thank you, please help yourself. And I have bottles of water in it and I've got to go get some snacks to put in there. I just put granola bars and peanut butter crackers or something like that. Um, because the delivery people right now, a lot of times aren't even having time to eat and, um, and they're having to work long hours. So while they, I, you know, somebody will say, well, you know, there's like have a job. Yes, everybody's lucky that has a job right now, but that don't mean your job's easy. So if that'll help you make it through your day without getting dehydrated, without getting sick, um, or just know that I appreciate it. Um, I, I want them to know that. So thank y'all, everybody who's out there trying to make everything work right now that ain't working. We have um, today got cut back to 50% because our numbers in um, Tarrant County and around have been in this, numerous other places. Um, I think Tarrant was up, of course, El Paso. Um, hi, Sissy Hildy. Um, are horrible out there. Um, so we're cutting back to 50% in the restaurants and businesses again, which is gonna be hard. I think bars are closing again if they don't have um, they do it on like a percentage. If they don't have a certain percentage of food as their income, they're considered a straight up bar and uh, they're shutting them down. It's just, it's hard. So thank you for everybody who's trying to keep it all rolling right now. Um, uh, Shannon, Shannon D said she, um, when she saying go out walking, it made her think about, she started singing like me. I go out walking after midnight. That's me. I love Miss Patsy Cline. Hey, Maxine. Uh, Max loved her Patsy Cline. And whenever I hear it, I always think of uh, my friend Susan and Patty's mama was the biggest Patsy Cline fan of all time. And anytime I hear go out walking, that's immediately my brain starts singing that song. And I'm that weirdo that anytime somebody says something, my brain immediately goes to a song and I start singing it. So that's me. But she said, for me, when I say I go out stomping, because what I usually do when I'm walking, yeah, so now I have to change my words. I go out stomping. That's going to be me. Now I'm going to be singing my song different. So thank you, Shannon, because that's a fact. Because, boy, when I walk, I'm just... Mm -mm 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 -mm. And I'm trying to get it all in. and usually have about a million things going in my head. And um, Terry. And I'm going to say... Terry, Terry Caldwell, she bought two feasts of friendship. So she, if you can, if you'll go down in the comments for last week's video, she will sell one of her feasts of friendships. She, you know, like we do when we like something, we buy two sometimes. So she has an extra if anybody can't get it, if you'll go down and find her in comments. Um, Carol and Patricia and a couple of y'all had messaged me about the 
Oh Lord, if you can see it over there, the way up high pattern, or if I can't see it for the back of my chair. Lord have mercy. This was not a good plan. And I'll go to that in a minute. Lord, let me see if I can grab it. Oh, without spilling the coffee and everything else. About way up high, where to get it. Um, I was gonna, I, I'm gonna do my Etsy. I hope I'll get it going this weekend. I designed it. I designed way up high and um, stitched it. And so I will try to get, I'm trying to get my Etsy up this weekend and it will be on there. So um, that's why you ask who got, who designed it, where to get it. I designed it. And so I'll put it up on the Etsy. Hopefully this weekend I'll get it up and going. I just keep double checking the chart, double checking the chart. Oh, and Amy Brown, if you're watching, there's your gift card. I'm gonna get in the mail. Lord have mercy. Amy Brown, um, who, if y'all get uh, fabulous cards, from me, they are made by Amy Brown Frank, who, I'm sorry, her husband, she's Frank, and she's like, Amy Brown just goes together so good, Amy Brown. She'll always be Amy Brown like Chrissy Cooper. Um, she'll always, when you have a name like that, just goes together good. So, I will get my Etsy shop up and get that pattern up in there. I have another one I've nearly got finished, a little snowman. So, thank y'all for asking about it. That made me feel really good that, um, that y'all liked it enough that y'all would stitch it. So. Thank you so much. Uh, Kathy J says, Over the River Felt on Etsy has great felt packs. And I went and looked at them. They had some really cute ones. So I've got to get that ordered so I can get my uh, Darlene Dion, uh, my friend Wilbur, stitched. He is so cute. So I want to get him done. Um, Patty um, is another one that has a fabulous name. Patty Pan, Patty Pan, has Clara and Henry O'Hare. She was looking for, I don't know if y'all remember a while back, and... Um, some of y'all helped her find him. And so now she has them. She's done with them. So they will be one of our shares this week. So when I got it written down over here, but I want to get back to that. So um, y'all are so sweet um, to help each other and then share back with each other when you're done. Because some of these things are hard to find. Um, and Peg Page, Linda Biggerstaff was looking, was the first person, I think, looking for Feast of Friendship. Um, she has... It, Linda, if you will contact her, you can find her down in the comments under there. Um, Sally, um, our friend Sally, who is always sweet and sends things to share, is a critical care nurse, uh, are in for 37 years. So she definitely falls into the thank you so much for trying to take care of all of us. Um, I talked to Daddy this morning before I got on here with y'all, and um, he has not heard from his test. We thought he would hear yesterday afternoon, but then his doctor's closed today. So I guess we won't hear until Monday. Um, he sounded a little bit better today. Of course, he's not one to eat, but he has to eat to take his medicines. Of course, Annie's there taking good care of him, uh, but he just feels like bad, you know, just so he's all congested. He's got some cough and stuff. So I'm figuring like his test will probably be positive, but I haven't seen, I've seen it on Vlogmas. So if you guys didn't see the Vlogmas, Daddy um, was a deputy sheriff my whole life, and now he works as a bailiff in the court. So he's still a deputy sheriff, but Jesus doesn't out in the field. But it has run through our courthouse. Of course, the court has to stay open. It just does. It's what has to happen. They've tried to do most everything uh, virtually and stuff, but things just have to stay open. Um, and so it has run through the courthouse. I believe he said the DA's office is just completely closed because there's not you know, they're just all got it. So he's feeling bad. Um, I know Danny and several of the others, they've all gone and got tested. And then you have people like Keely Wildman, my baby had a lady come to work knowing she was sick. If you're throwing up, keep your butt at home. Came to work two days, Wednesday, before Thanksgiving and the Friday after Thanksgiving, knowing she was sick and throwing up. And guess what? She has the COVID. So now they all had to go get tested. One of the other ladies in the office has it. Um, Keely, of course, baby's pregnant. So he immediately went and got tested. He has seen people, not in close quarters, but people who are really sick, some people that he rents pasture from and stuff. Um, that are super sick. So, y'all, be considerate. 
If you're sick, stay home. Don't go outside. If you need something, call somebody. They will drop it off on your porch and drive away, I promise. I just, it just galls the fire out of me. Ugh. So yeah, there's my soapbox for today. If you're sick, stay home. Y'all the ones causing the problems. We don't have enough to begin with. And Ouija T says she hates to take down her fog decor because the orange is her favorite color and it makes her so happy. And I say, well, then do your Christmas decor in fall colors. I know at the flower shop we would have, you know, we would go decorate for people for holidays. And people would have, like, they're in the husband's, because, you know, when you go decorate people's houses, um, they ain't the houses we live in, or they ain't the houses I live in. Um, I remember being, you know, still, like, super young and going to decorate at somebody's house, and they had, like, they had a maid. And she opened up the door in a maid suit, <laughs> and then right there in the foyer is a zebra rug. Not like a faux zebra rug. Like there's a dead zebra skin laying on there. And I'm like. And she said, I don't worry about that. Just come on. There's several more rolled up. You know, I said, there might be something on my shoes. You know, we use uh, sticky gum and things uh, to stick things together at the flower shop. Or, you know, tape. And I'm just like, that. She goes, there's several more rolled up. Uh, it, it's fine. Just come on. I was like, Lord have mercy is right. I thought I was going to die. I mean, these people, so they have like game, not like, like we have a pool table now that we're not incredibly poor like we used to be, but they have like a game room with like, you know, wildebeest and zebras and, you know, bears and elephants and things in there. And in those rooms, um, I know we did like a hunter tree so it had like pine cones and berries but pheasant feathers and things like this so they have all the oranges and browns and just a little hint of that tilly you know aqua e color on the tree so if you love that i think your christmas decor should be about you i don't think it has to be red and green i don't think it has it has to make you happy so i say you get you some pheasant feathers and you get you some gold and some orange and brown and you do your Christmas tree however you like with some pine cones and some pyracantha berries and things like this and it will be beautiful and it will st still make you, you don't have to do it all red and green. I don't think, now that's just my two cents worth, but I think your Christmas decor should suit you and should be about you, not about societal norms. That's our word today, societal. How about that? Societal norms. Um, I don't believe in societal norms. Your societal norm is whatever is normal for you. Society can just take a hike. So I say you do your Christmas in a bunch of orange if that makes you happy, and I think it'll be gorgeous. That's my two cents worth. Um, Stitching 304, who, hello, patience, says that mischievous stitches, which I didn't get over there to watch it, has a floss tag tutorial. Um, a couple of y'all had asked about making the little floss keeps and the floss tags. And I said I would try to do one of those on the Vlogmases. But she says she has one on her channel, Mischievous Stitches. So I'm going to try to get over there and take a look at that. Something else that popped up in my feed that I did not get to watch yet is Vonna is doing a tutorial on Teresa's. If y'all haven't seen them, Teresa Kogut's three star ornaments. There was one she did maybe in 2016, I think. That's a star shape. And then she's released, she just released three new ones. They are so cute. There's a Sani, and one says December 25th, and one says something else. So cute. But um, she, Vonna's done a tutorial on them, so that's up on Vonna's feed now. And so I'm going to watch that because y'all know anything I know about finishing. I either learned it from Vonna, or I learned it from watching um, Kathy Haverman. So I watched the... Um, Stitching with the Housewives tutorials, but I had already watched the other two before that. So they were my first forays into how to finish anything and it not be an absolute catastrophe. Um, oh my gosh. 
Oh, Donna was, we were laughing about the string on my shirt last week. She thought it was a spider. And after I finished filming, I looked down, I was like, so I don't know how long that dang string was on my shirt, y'all. And look, sit there looking like a goober with a string on my shirt, but whatever. But what y'all talking about that spider. Remember back in the 80s and in the, no, I guess 80s, 90s. Yeah, late 80s and 90s when we all had, um, we'd all put a bunch of mousse in our hair, you know, and crunch it up. And you had these curls that had mousse in them and everything. You had your big bangs and you had all this hair of mousse. Well, my cousin Kim, Lord, was sitting there and you know how you come in up. I don't know, maybe y'all don't. There's trees and things hanging down close to your door. And a, somehow or other, a spider got on her head. <laughs> And then they were watching TV and her husband said something about it. And she went, oh my gosh. And she started trying to like knock it off. But because all that moosey, crunchy stuff in her hair, it couldn't like, it was like stuck. And so the more she would hit it, the more it would just like get tangled up in there and its legs was coming off. And Lord have merciful goodness. Now I'm itching. So that, but Donna, that made me laugh and that made me think about that and I hadn't thought about that in a long time about that spider getting caught up in Cam's hair. Oh, Lord. That's too much. Um, Kathy asked about how I store my cross-stitch pieces, uh, my big framed pieces. Um, I've told you, I pull my clothes apart in the closet and I hang them. So I have like, you know, like a nail behind my clothes and I hang them on the wall behind my clothes. That way they're hanging, the frames don't get scratched up or anything, and they're not out in the way. I mean, let's be honest, what does the wall behind your clothes ever do? Nothing, it might as well do something for you. So my big, my bigger pieces that are framed, I hang them all back there behind my wall, behind my clothes, and then James Williams don't see the hose in the wall that, you know, stresses him out so much. The littler pieces, um, there's a couple out over here. Um, my Smurfette stitches mittens, and then that's a prayer schooler, and then the Blackbird Frosty's Night Out drum over there. I have a tub, and I just layer those in there and then put a piece of like white tissue paper, and then put another layer of them and white tissue paper like this so that they don't get crunched up like that, and then I just put them in my closet up on a shelf, so that way they don't get crushed or bent and aren't, um, up in the, you know, if like you put them in the attic, that's why, and I want to tell you, that's why my decorating is not finished. At my other house, I had attic access. I would go upstairs and then I could just open the door and walk out in the attic and get my stuff. Well, here, these ceilings, I don't know, they're like 12 foot ceilings or something, in the same way in the garage. And so it is, they carried my stuff up in the attic and I can't get, I would have to stand on a ladder to try to pull down the ladder and then unfold the ladder standing on the ladder. And I ain't trying to die. So, um, and I didn't feel like asking James Williams to do it after he got home from work every night this week. So I just thought I'll have, we'll do it uh, Saturday morning. We'll get up there in the attic and get all my stuff down and I can finish my Christmas decorating because my Christmas tree and my big Christmas tree and my, um, Ornaments, my blown glass ornaments that go on the big tree. And then this will be, oh Lord, how to make your hand go right there. That is a little tiny Christmas tree that I put um, good old girls ornaments on. I have some of her shiny brights and then just other old um, glass ornaments that she had. And then I put the kids things that, that have managed to survive over the years on there. So that'll be there. And I just stuck remember me in front of it for now, but it doesn't have the decorations on it because they're in the tub up in the attic with all the other things. So we'll get those down and uh, bring those down, but that's how I store my bigger pieces. I hang behind my clothes in the closet on the wall if they're framed and have, you know, a little place on the back to hang them. And if they're not, if they're smalls, even if they're small flat folds or if they're small like pin keeps, I just put them in a bin. I put a layer of tissue paper, put a layer of them a layer of tissue paper, a layer of them. 
And then that way there's no weight on them. There's no, and then, you know, their bin has got a lid on it. So then nothing can damage them. So I have one for winter, summer, spring, and fall like that. And then I just keep them in there like that. So that keeps them safe. Um, Rita had made me think about something I hadn't thought about in a long time. She said she's um, in the house and back in the, I think she said the 80s, in one of the magazines, they'd take little, they had taken banding, like Ada banding, and then, which you could use linen, whatever count you wanted, but then they had stitched little Christmas motifs on there, and then they had done them like paper chains, like that, and I hadn't thought about that in so long, and it was so cute, and she said she thought she was going to do some of that while she's in the house um, um, stitching, so... Peggy had asked about the reusable stickers. I was talking about that Edith sent the girls that they love so much, those little reusable sticker books that were kind of like color forms. And Edith said she got them at Walmart. I found them and tried to send a link to Peggy on Amazon so she could see a picture of it. I hope it worked. They're by Melissa and Doug. They say reusable stickers on there. And they have dinosaurs and farms. And the one Edith sent the little girls had little like paper doll girls on there looking and little dog and then little outfits you could change out for all the seasons and things. So each page had like they were like um, ice skating and then another page they were having a pajama party and another page they were at the beach and you could take, you know, change their swimsuits and their little pails and sunglasses and all these things. So they, ha and I would love to show them to you, but they uh, snatched them up and took them home and they've taken them to Georgetown and all kinds of places. So Peggy said uh, she thought her little four-year-old granddaughter would like them. And Aria Kyle loves them. Um, and that's, you know, should be about that age group. And so she is in love with those things. So Edith is a genius. She said she used to get them for her Katie. And the little stocking, which I didn't grab, I thought I had right here, and now I don't know what I've done, that she sent that was so cute with little Rudolph, she said is by JSW Designs. It's in the video last week. And I'm going to finish it up and put it on a little tree. Is by JSW Designs and it is adorable. Sherry said um, that the DMC, she was talking about Joanne's and the DMC being on still last week. And I went last week when I went in my Joanne's and they didn't have the boxes for this, for the, um, they were out of these. And I was in panic mode. And I was like, oh Lord. Well, they shipped it straight here. Um, it took a little bit longer, I mean, than I'd hoped, but they got here, they have got here so I can mail them out now. Um, so she had mentioned that she was out of, some of y'all had mentioned that you were getting out of thread. And the Joann shipping, you know, they don't have fancy floss and they don't have a lot of fabric, but they do have finishing things. They do have uh, floral picks and things and they will ship them right straight to you and they have good sales so I was really pleasantly surprised that all my stuff from Joann's came it came like I said a little bit later than I thought but it took about a week and a half so they were supposed to be here on Friday and I don't think they got here I don't think they got here on Friday that was initially they weren't supposed to be here on Friday they were supposed to be here before that and then but then they all got here in fine shape and it didn't take that just a couple more days. So I was very happy with them. So keep that in mind that um, Joann's, I'm sure Michael's does the same thing. Hobby Lobby, you know, whatever you have close to you will ship, but also your LNS's will ship. And like I said, get you an LNS, even if it's not an L, LNS. Um, find you somebody. Um, Jerry Lynn ships me stuff and it comes fast. Shelly ships me stuff, it gets here fast. And they're not my LNSs. They're just my, it's kind of like, you know, choosing your family. You can choose your family. They don't have to be born to you. You can pick who you want. Well, that just pick you an LNS. I love those ladies. They, um, you know, I can run up to the Stitch Niche, but sometimes I can't get out, don't want to get out, whatever. But I just have a relationship with them, I feel like, with Jerlyn at Finish a Quilt on Etsy and with Shelly at Just Stitching in Ohio. I don't, I just do. I love talking to them, visiting with them, ordering from them. And so pick you somebody and just, they will ship it to you. We don't have to do without. Now they may not have everything, but I guarantee you like Jerry Lynn, um, when she sent me last, she said, 
hey, you talked about stitching Cecilia Turner's Cardinal. Instead of this, I'm going to send you this. Um, it'll be prettier. You know, they will, they will, or if they're out of something, if I can say, I'll say, hey. And she said, well, I don't have that, but this is similar. Is it okay to swap? Yes, yes. So pick y'all somebody. Pick y'all somebody and get a relationship going with them, and they will take care of you. So um, remember that now that we're going to be, looks like shutting back down a little bit again, that um, all our nice places will send us all the good things. Now, if I can get past all my junk here, we're going to do this in a little different order than I have it written down because of how it's piled up. Um, let's see. I turned a different way this way. I just, I'm trying to change all around so you don't have to look at the same stuff all the time. We're going to go into whips real quick. Um, I worked on May Peace and Health of Tender Days by My Lady's Needle. Um, the Stitch Niche, I know, has had them here in Arlington. And um, y'all told me the Attic in, in Mesa, Arizona has them. Those are the only two places I know of that have them. It is um, a beautiful, Gloria, just this pattern is so beautiful. I did the um, DMC conversion. They offer a silk and they offer different counts of fabric. These are the DMC threads. They are beautiful. That green is so pretty. And I did the 28 count. I think it's a week's fabric and I'm gonna try to call things up around here. Uh -huh. We'll see if that works. I don't mean knocking everything off the floor. And here we have this week, I got some more done here. I think I finished this little flower too, but I came down here, I know, and I did this whole motif here. And I am just, and so there's just the tree and the stag here, and I'm turning the corner, and I'm, you know, I'm right here, so I'm really moving right along, and I'm gonna try to work on it some more. And I know, y'all, this doesn't show up, but there is a flower there. And when you're looking at it with your eyeballs, it isn't the exact same color. But this is just beautiful. Maybe I worked on this side. I worked some on the border and I can't remember which side I worked on the border. But I have been so pleased with this piece. There is very, there's like eight over one stitches in each of these. You could easily switch them out or maybe six. There's like, so, you could easily get this pattern and do it on Ada. If you're an Ada stitcher, there's nothing to keep you from doing this pattern on Ada because those are the only ones right there. And it is how many? One, two, three, four. So you could do, you could easily just do straight crosses on there instead of the over one because there's four over ones. So that would be an easy switch to change it over. So if you're an Ada stitcher and you want to do a beautiful sampler. This is a beautiful antique reproduction sampler and you would be um, absolutely fine on Ada. The, what is the one I got from Be Stitch Me? Not the coffee club, but the toast. If you did this on Be Stitch Me toast, I think you would just faint at how beautiful it would be. And the DMC threads, these are all DMC threads and the colors are just rich and beautiful. So, this would be a very affordable antique reproduction sampler to stitch on Ada with DMC threads. I mean, I know everybody can't afford the fancy flosses, um, let alone the silks, or you're just hesitant to, because it is expensive. I mean, they, they do add up. I mean, it's expensive. So I don't see a thing wrong with that. And I would think that would be gorgeous stitched on there. So if any of you guys get that and um, stitch it on, on Ada, especially that Bestitch Me Toast, like I said, that Bestitch Me fabric is, I've got to get an order in. It is beautiful. I'm, as a matter of fact, I'm fixing to show you some right here. This is my Winter ABCs I started on. Winter ABCs by Little House Need to Work. And I think everybody and their dog has stitched these but me. And I'm, you know, I'm slow. And here are my threads. Let me see. Let's go. Will they go this way better? There we go. And this is the, I use the treasure braid. And it is so pretty. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna try using it on some of the snow. Yeah. I'm probably using it wrong. And that's probably the problem, okay? 
And I just took it off of here and you see how it's got, can y'all see how it has all like several pieces in there? I don't know, maybe I'm just supposed to be using one of those things. I don't know. I just took it off and cut it off like it was a piece of thread and tried using it as extra. So I added it in and just stitched it along with my threads. And I used my same two threads because I looked at it with one and it just looked kind of necky. The coverage wasn't, if I had just done it all with one, it would have been fine. But with one and then with that one thread, it really looked too sparse. So I just added it in. So it was hard to pull and it made a bumpy finish. So you can see it's got a little bit of glow to it because this is the only place I've put it so far. And I may just do it under the bottom of things of snow. I love that it has a little bit of flicker to it, but because it was so hard to pull it through, my stitches are ugly. They're just kind of bumpity. So there we go, it's the whole thing. So I'm down to ice skates on the letters and then Frost has a few, I think I have two more little snowflakes here and then there's a little house that goes here. I am loving this thing so much. This is the Coffee Club. This is the Stitch Me Coffee Club. It feels great. It is gorgeous. Um, I'm loving anything I've put this, I've used these fabrics on. I am in love and I've got to get an order in. So you're about to be hearing from me, Be Stitch Me. And I know some of y'all do the fight night and I can never remember to do the fight night on Friday. And um, she sells things that she has made on the fight night. And then um, you can get them right then instead of having to wait for the custom dies. But I can never remember to do the fight night. So I always have to wait. So go me. But her fabric is fabulous. It has held, it holds up well. See, I just ran my little weird thing on the edge there. But, and I think I had Shelly send me a piece of fabric to do this on. But if you think I can figure out what I did with it, think again. And I keep all my fabric in one spot. So I can't figure out what in the world I have done with that. So go me. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I had her send me another piece and in my brain it was for that. Because I know I had her send me a piece for um, a shepherd's bush thing. So maybe that's what my brain is thinking of and I didn't. But boy, if I did, I don't know what I've done with it. This I found an empty in a box looking for something for Christmas. Why this was in there, I don't know. Um, Peace on Earth by Blackbirds. It is so, so pretty. Mine looks a little more rust. So Ouija T, this one would be a good one for your kind of rusty orangey Christmas theme. It is beautiful. I love, love, love it. I said, here are my threads, which were all rolled up inside this. I had this in a roll, all rolled up. So I had done Peace on Earth and this little bit here. So I came in last night and did this section and then added on the second green color. It's on r, r Straw, something straw. And it is so pretty and it's real stiff linen, so I'm loving that. I know I love me some stiff linen. Since I stitch in hand, that makes me happy. So I love it, love it, love it. So this one has been, I grabbed that thing back up and put a few stitches in it last night and was so, so happy. I completely forgot about it. Go me. There you go. Okay. I'm gonna have a y'all know I'm gonna have an avalanche here in a minute. Y'all gonna get to laugh because I'm making a big mess. My finish this week was um, Jingle All the Way by Brenda Gervais. It is so cute. So cute. And it has, you know, she sometimes has little fun stitches in there, which makes me super happy. So here are my threads. I did use the fuzzy stuff on his beard. And then I had most of the called for colors, but not all of them. His outfit is this, and it is Chili Pepper by Classic Color Works. Oh my gosh, it is so cute. And it is on, I found this in my stash, Dublin White Linen 25 count, and I dyed it with gray writ, okay? So, here he is on the gray writ dyed 25 count Dublin. And I love him. I use the fuzzy stuff on his beard. 
here again, I'm always my own worst enemy, right? So this 25 count, I did the two threads and I didn't think I got enough coverage that I wanted. So I came back and did three threads. So my stitches aren't quite as flat and smooth as I like, but you know, oh well, it is what it is. But then when I decided I wanted to add the fuzzy stuff, so I had the three threads and the fuzzy stuff. So pulling that through there to get his beard done, and I don't know if you can, it has a little bit of a fleck to it, but because it's not the parchment, it doesn't look, see this looks super white. So I didn't want to just use it, like him be crazy white with everything else on here being kind of muted. So he has a little bit of sparkle in there and fuzz, but I did the parchment with the fuzzy stuff. And it is so cute and he is so cute. And you can see I've got 2020 down here. And you know, I just put it on the back of his shoe like some toilet paper stuck on there coming out the bathroom because that's how I'm feeling about your 2020. You can just get on out of here. And then um, I put my initials. Lord, I put them somewhere. Right there. You can see them, they're so small. Right there behind, I just backstitched real tiny under those berries right there. So. This was a fun stitch. It stitched up quick and it is beautiful. But that chili pepper by Classic Color Works, I just love that for his robe. I just think it's fabulous color. This I think is Tree Cobbler. Let me see before I tell a lie. Yeah, the berries and the candy cane are Tree Cobbler. Another gorgeous color, but dude, fabulous. And the green, this green is so pretty and I think it is, if I could read, Oscar by Weeks Dye Work. This Oscar is just beautiful. It has the satin stitches in there and just so fun. But I was super pleased with this piece and enjoyed stitching it like so much. Uh, this week, one of the Vlogmases, I've got a cross cut of like timber that I'm gonna finish him and stick him on there. So that's gonna be his finish. But I didn't FFO him this week um, because I wanted to do it on one of the Vlogmases. So he will be um, one of the shares this week, this jingle. Jingle all the way, but he was super, super fun uh, little stitch and I really enjoyed him. Mom and I got to go. That was the day she and I went to uh, sister was going to be gone all day, so we went to uh, Joanne's Hobby Lobby, somewhere else. We just masked up because it was so cold, and we tried to get her to walk and get some exercise in because that's really good for your, your brain, but it, when it's cold, she doesn't like to get out and get, like, super cold, so she, um, that was some places I could take her walking around, and she could look at some things she didn't get to see all the time, and so she enjoyed that, so then she helped me find the little we looked around for things we wanted. I wanted a little oval paper mache box, but they didn't have any at Joann's or at um, Hobby Lobby. So I don't know if Michael's had any or not, but then we found this little oval cross cut of timber and we really liked it. So that's what we're gonna go with. Okay, Stitchy Kindness this week came, Vicki sent me the, and Vicki is a genius. Um, she sent the girls little bags of goodies, which are already gone. They worked on their little bag of goodies and took that. Well, Kimi James took hers home last night and Aria uh, took hers home last night too to play with this morning. Michael was gonna give hers this morning while she's at the office with her while I'm filming and then I'll leave here when I'm done and go pick her up and let her um, spend the day with me. But that way she had something new to play with when um, she's stuck with her mama. So. Uh, when she, Mike has calls. She loves being with her mama, but her mama had two or three calls scheduled this morning. So, but Vicki sent me the bags for the girls, this beautiful thread keep. These beautiful, look at, now I don't have any of this rose gold color. And look at these. These are like super fun little heart shaped ones. I never thought about doing the heart shape. This is too cute. And then it has a little, this little bowl thing. So, and I won't be able to get it apart without my glasses on. I had it apart at the house the day when I got it, but, so thank you for this, super cute, but this, um, she this beautiful card, which 
I, it made me think of my mom's patterns when I'd see patterns in there and her sewing stuff when I was a kid. So these are adorable. But to wrap all the things in, she used old pattern pieces. And I loved it. So instead of tissue paper, if you're making um, a gift for a sewer stitcher, this is the cutest thing. I love this. And um, she sent Simply Winter. Um, we're trading these. So I'm going to go ahead. I know I haven't got Simply Autumn, but I'm going to send it to you. We're trading those out uh, with each other. And then this beautiful, look at this project bag with these beautiful threads on here. How beautiful is that? I love those spools of thread. This beautiful gold interior on here. And then she had it with the little down in here. So, and then all wrapped up. So if you're doing a gift for somebody who is a stitcher, I thought that was the cutest, smartest thing. So thank you so much for the beautiful bag and the gifts for the girls because not only were they having fun with them, but they were very helpful um, this morning when Micah's got her call so I could film with y'all. That was um, gonna be super great for her to have something new to play with and look at. She had little books in there and activity books and things. So she was gonna do those this morning um, and it was gonna be something she hadn't seen before. So that was gonna be great for her. Can I show this? Lord, I've got this pile on over here. So that was my stitching kindness week. So thank you so much, Vicki, from me and the girls. We had so much fun. And then I had a little bit of haul. I ordered this book, I saw it on a fluke. And I don't quilt, but it's when the cold wind blows, I wanna learn someday, but I'll probably never get to this level. And it's by Blackbirds. But I wanted it because of this. Back to school Pillasham. How dang cute is this? And it is stitched on, does it tell me what size? I think 36 by 23 is what it tells you to use. You need one and a third yards of checked print and six, six skeins and four skeins of embroidery floss. I thought this was just famous and it's kind of like my chicken scratch embroider um, done on. I love gingham and I have my little gingham quilt back here on the table right now, but under that Christmas cloth, on top of that Christmas cloth. But I thought this was so cute. So I loved this and I'd kind of been, I'd seen this before and then when I saw it come up and I don't know, maybe thrift books. I don't know where it came from. But y'all, some of the patterns in here are just, let me see if I can find the, I mean, this you could just sit around and look at for hours because the pictures are beautiful. I mean, literally like a coffee table book. You could just sit around and look at this thing even if you didn't ever do any kind of quilting or anything, but the quilts in here are just over the top beautiful. Let me see if I can find another one. This Baroque, look at that Baroque leaf. Dude. So that was part, of, that was my haul this week and then I got uh, an order from Jerry Lynn it fin she's finished the quilt on Etsy, and I think her shop will be opening back up this morning. She's been closed this week to get everything listed. So if you tried to get her this week, um, she was closed down. So to, to get everything listed and up and going. So also before I forget, she is sweet enough to share a, um, a discount code with everybody. So I'm going to hold it up here, but it's Santa Baby. So if you order from her Etsy shop and you use the, in the disc, where it says discount, put in Santa Baby, just one word, Santa Baby. It gives you 20%. Um, so if you guys will use that. Um, she, then this is where she said, uh, she sent a ruby slipper and um, she thought that would be better than the cherry cobbler. So she's super sweet to send me this. So. For the uh, Cecilia Turner piece we were talking about out of uh, the primitive needle, primitive cross stitch, punch needle and primitive stitcher. Holy moly. 
I'd ordered Louisiana hot sauce, which is beautiful. I don't know why my light seems a little low today. Another Oscar because I loved it so much on the Brenda Gervais piece and the peach fuzz for his face. And I just went ahead and used something else because I wanted to get, get on down the road with it. And um, I'll use it with that. That is a really good base color. And um, I wanted to go ahead and put it back in there because I thought I had something similar, but I didn't. And I got a ruby slipper and two holly jollies here to get my Christmas stitching going. And I'm gonna hold this up here so you can see it. She's finished a quilt on Etsy there um, because I know my my speech sometimes throws y'all for a loop. I ordered this little charm pack. I'm gonna try to turn it where y'all can see this. How pretty are these? These are so pretty and I'll do something with them. So gorgeous. It says it's Sarah's Story by Betsy Chuchian. Sarah's Story 1830 to 1850 by Moda. And it is just, golly, those are beautiful fabrics. I ordered this Christmas sampler and it is by Cottage Garden and I loved it. It says Advent, Bell, Christmas, Dasher, Evergreen, Frosty, Gingerbread, and I mean, it is so cute. So, so cute. I love this. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping I can get this going and then because she's sweet, she sent me Merry Christmas, Cottage Gardens, Merry Christmas. And then she sent us an extra share, which I have to remember to write down right here so I can remember to put the night, put the word. And I don't see my pen. Oh no. Uh, now we gotta rely on my brain. This is Star Bright by X's and O's Needlework Designs. And he is a little fuzzy bear with a little fuzzy, he is so cute. I love him. He is adorable. Star Bright by X's and O's. He is, how big is he? 113 by 121. He looks so much bigger than that. I guess because he's so cute and detailed. And look, he just looks so detailed. You think he's way bigger than that, but he's just 113 by 121. And he doesn't have a ton of threads. He has some chronic and some fuzzy stuffs. Of course, you could stitch it without it, but you won't have that cute, adorable, fuzzy look. But it is so dang cute. So he will also be, so we'll have three shares this week. So, so yeah. So we will have um, the Jingle Alt, we'll have Star Bright and use the word star we will have jingle all the way use the word jingle and then we will have patty pins clara and henry o'hare that y'all helped her find she's got him stitched so if y'all will use the word clara for that so clara jingle or star if you're interested in any of the shares this week um this will also be um our Vlogmas for today, and then we just need to go over the recipients for last week. Oh my gosh, I nearly forgot to do that even though I have a stack right here. Holy mackerel, y'all. So, let's see if I can read my own right in here. Okay. Berries is gonna be, um, gonna come straight from Misty. So the gathering berries here, I have it so y'all can see it. And like I said, the uh, the proceeds for it, if any of y'all order it from her, are still going to her family member's family, her nephew's family after he passed to help them um, with a few drug expenses and stay afloat and things. So gathering berries by Mr. Purcell at Luminous Fiber Arts. And it goes to Tammy Moyer. I used to have a friend named Barbara Moyer. I went to school with her, um, Moyer. That's the only other person I ever knew with that name, Tammy Moyer. 
Um, if you will let me know um, how to get a hold of you, it will come straight from Misty, but it is um, this chart and it will be a PDF. So I need an email for you. I believe it's a PDF. Um, I need to finish my coffee this morning, evidently. Uh, midnight here, so Midnight Ride was our other one that I finished that I had so much fun with. Um, and thank you, Susie, for the onyx so that I could get him finished. Goes to Judy Radernick. Judy Radernick. So if you will get me your address so I can get him in the mail to you, Judy Radernick. Uh, you um, are the recipient of Midnight Ride. Sampler. The Sampler House by Blackbird. Goes to Allison Norris. Allison Norris, if you will get me your address. Um, and I'm Nisi Lynn at Yahoo is the easiest way to get hold to me. I think it's on the, it'll be in the description box, but that's the easiest way to there. And then we have the ADAs. So we had three people that um, received the ADAs. So I have two, we had three ADAs, okay. As y'all can tell, I'm not a good card player. So the ADA recipients are Deanna Ellett, Deanna Ellett, Sue Dow, Sue Dow, and, <coughs> sorry y'all, Linda Hartsfield, Linda Hartsfield. So if y'all would get me your addresses so I can get these things in the mail um, and get them to y'all and on their way. And then this week, like I said, use the word star, Jingle or Clara, if you're interested in this week's share. So um, I will see y'all again tomorrow for Vlogmas number five. Like I said, this will be Vlogstube 50 and Vlogmas number four. So y'all have a great Friday afternoon. Take care and stay safe, and I'll see y'all tomorrow. Bye.